So I'm going to demonstrate how the Japanese layer their kimono. Now this is not the official certified way to put on a kimono, but it works in America if you're not Japanese. So first you start with undergarments that she's not wearing. Normally there'd be a white top and a white skirt made of cotton. However, this is the piece that maybe most of you would be more familiar with. It's called an under kimono, and it is worn like a slip. So, and as beautiful as this is, it doesn't show to the public. The only thing that shows will be a little bit of the collar underneath the over kimono. So when you put this on, notice that the under kimono is fairly short, doesn't touch the top of her feet. Because it doesn't show, it's not meant to show under the kimono. You also want to make sure that you wrap it left side over right side with the opening on your right leg. Don't do it the other way. To do it right over left, this is how they wrap corpses before they bury them. So we want to avoid that. So left over right, like this, hold that here. And since this is an undergarment, it does need to be tied to close, but this isn't going to show. Tie it tightly and tuck in the ends. And now the over kimono. You'll notice this is orange and this is slightly pink. Doesn't matter. Pink is a very common color for an under kimono. Now, here we are with the gorgeous shibori formal kimono. Now you'll see that the, the uh, sleeves of the under kimono fit neatly into the sleeves of the over kimono. All right. So these kimonos that are formal are worn off the back of the neck, folded over. So again, you only see a very little bit of the under kimono. And it follows across the front. Fold it down, fold it down. Now remember, it's left over right. But look, it looks very long. It's not too long. And this is how you adjust the height. Cross the top of the toes, again, left over right. What you're looking for is a straight line here and a straight line across the bottom. You'll notice there's some extra blousing up here, very typical. In olden days, women used to have kimono made quite long. As you might think, the Japanese women are more my height than her height. So why are the kimono so long? Well, you have this fold here at the waist. You have another fold of kimono here. And when you wear it with a belt on top, you'll see just a little bit of a fold here. And it means that she or her family could afford to have the extra fabric in her kimono. So it's just a very understated sign of wealth. Now, normally also you would have another tie here that wouldn't show to the public. Now in Japan, if a woman was to become a kimono dresser and she would work at a beauty salon or a wedding uh, bridal salon, she would have to study for many years in order to do this correctly. So for example, exactly how much neck should be showing in the front and the back, how long the kimono should be down her arm, should her wrist show and how much. So it depends on how old she is, what the occasion is, you have to learn all of that before you can become a certified kimono dresser in Japan. So. Then finally, the obi. Now, if you're going to a formal occasion, you might prefer a more formal obi. Lots more gold, glitter, a different style of obi actually. So this is a less formal obi. It's called Nagoya style, which means it's folded over for three quarters of the length where the belt shows in the front, but the bow section is wide in the back. So I'll demonstrate a very quick and easy way to put these on. This is not the traditional style. You put a 45 degree angle here and you spin this way. Keep going, keep going, stop, pull it tight. Keep going, going, all right. And then we tie it off here. <laughs> All right.
And then here's a very quick and easy way to make the bow in the back. And you make that by bringing the short tail around and tucking it in. And you can adjust it. Then we adjust it a little bit more in the back. Arms up. Adjust here if you need to. Tuck it in here. And voila. Go ahead and take a spin. Turn around.